Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I found in my travels, and during the month of October, I also talk about some of the more spooky reads I've encountered. And today is a short story Tuesday, so I wanted to focus on some uh, spooky uh, short stories, Um, or in this case, a novella, which is pretty short. Uh, It's always weird to see what is a short story and what is classified as a novella. Sometimes I just delineate or don't even bother to make a difference between the two of them. Uh, So if it's if it's short, I'm going to talk about it. Uh, And today's short story is all about vampires and might even be the first fictional vampire story out there. I am referring to The Vampire by John Polidori, which was published in 1819. For those who don't know, John Polidori was a physician as well as a writer. Uh, He wrote poems, um, uh, essays, and short stories. Not not a whole lot to his name, but what he did write was uh, pretty influential in one way or another. Uh, He uh, was friends with Lord Byron and Mary Shelley, and while they were um, together one time, they came up with a contest to write some spooky fiction. Uh, The contest ended up creating Frankenstein for Mary Shelley and the vampire uh, for John Polidori, and Lord Byron also wrote uh, an unfinished story about um, ghosts and, and vampires as well. Uh, called The Fragment, or something like that, The Fragments. Uh, So um, pretty (laughs) influential time, uh, on the one hand creating the basis for all vampire literature, and on the other hand creating one of the greatest works in Gothic literature, Frankenstein. Uh, So not a whole lot else is known about John Polidori, apart from the fact that he uh, he killed himself, um, although the coroner said it was uh, natural causes. It is largely believed that because he had depression um, and because his life wasn't going the way that he wanted it to, uh, he drank some chemicals which killed him and that uh, that was the end of his life, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, and so that's really who John Polidori is. Maybe not known for a lot of literature, but what he is known for is seen as the, sort of the precursor for all vampire fiction that we see today. So without further ado, let's talk about the vampire. I will do a summary, a little bit of an analysis, and we will move on from there. So the vampire focuses on um, two different main characters, although one of them is is more of a is more of the antagonist of the situation, not really the main character, but uh, it focuses on Lord Ruthven. He is a reclusive loner living in London society. Uh, he's seen as a bit of a, uh, a curiosity because he, um, he, he doesn't talk much. Uh, he, uh, he's very pale and he, like, he doesn't have a lot of expressions on his face. But because when he does talk, like, he, like, he, there is some lively conversation there, uh, he's seen as a curiosity, so people keep him around. At the same time, we learn about Aubrey. A, uh, a young British gentleman who, who um, like his parents recently died. And so him and his sister have gained uh, an inheritance, uh, which has put them into contact with people like Lord Ruthven. And at one party, uh, Lord Ruth- Ruthven and uh, Aubrey hit it off and uh, decide to travel Europe together. Um, however, uh, along the way, Lord Ruthven acts very strangely, especially around other people in various towns. Uh, he, uh, like, he hangs out with young people and encourages them in their vices, uh, and, and to adopt other bad behaviors. And, uh... Um, Aubrey is just unsettled by Lord Ruthven uh, and doesn't quite know what to make of him. They end up getting to Rome where Aubrey finds out that Lord Ruthven has been having an affair um, or some type of uh, illicit relationship with a young woman uh, uh, of a friend of his. And uh, at that point, Aubrey decides to split with uh, um, uh, Lord Ruthven and heads to Greece. There he meets a beautiful woman named Ianthe, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. 
uh, she um, and him develop a strong relationship together. He is in, in love with Yante, and she tells him all about vampires, um, the, uh, the the folklore of, of the area where she's at. And uh, it's, it's funny because Aubrey is like, the more she talks, the more he, she, he's like, that sounds like Lord Ruthven, but he doesn't, he doesn't allow himself to, to fully recognize what is happening to him. One evening, Aubrey is attacked in the woods, um, and at the same time, uh, Iante is is killed by uh, um, a, a, you know a mysterious figure. Uh, her her throat is slashed, and it seems like a, a, an animal kind of took her. And this leads to some cries of, of a vampire around. Uh, and at the same time, Ruthven is 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 in Greece, and but Aubrey doesn't make the connection between the two. Uh, and so, like, Aubrey ends up, um, reuniting with Ruthven, who was there for him while he was in his sad and feverish kind of state, uh, and they end up traveling about together, but on the road, uh, a bunch of bandits show up and they attack and kill, uh, Ruthven, who seemingly dies at this point, and Aubrey, uh, forces, or, no, uh, Ruthven, as he's dying, forces Aubrey to swear that he won't tell anyone that he died, uh, presumably to leave his legacy intact in, in London, and Aubrey just, go, uh, agrees to this without, without issue. Uh, and, uh, the next day when Aubrey goes to check on the corpse, uh, he's found that it's vanished and he just assumes that the, the bandits might have taken it along with the clothes and buried the body so that there was no evidence uh, of, of a murder or anything really. And when he gets back to London, he finds out that his sister is engaged and, and when he sees a picture of the man who she is engaged to, um, Aubrey realizes that uh, Lord Ruthven is still alive and he sees Lord Ruthven and he can't do anything about it because he tries to tell his sister but because he's bound by this oath of promising not to tell anyone about Lord Ruthven, very clever on, on Ruthven's part, mind you, uh, he, um, uh, 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 he can't say anything. Aubrey is is forced to remain quiet, so much so that he's driven mad in the process. And uh, like Ruthven pay, uh, like checks in on him and uh, like uh, the kind of mocks him. And then Aubrey can't really tell anyone about it, but he does write a letter to the his guardians um, who try to come and do something. However, Aubrey ends up dying and. Uh, Ruthven ends up getting married to Aubrey's sister, and on the night of their wedding, uh, Ruthven murders uh, the sister as a vampire would do, and that's where the story ends there. In terms of analysis, there's a little bit to talk about here, uh, uh, especially given that this is the first, you know, real vampire story. It, it's important to look at it and see how it might have influenced stories down the road. Uh, and and at first, the first point I want to talk about is the origins of the fictional vampire, where we see uh, Polidori really setting up uh, and establishing the details that would go on to influence future stories like, you know, Interview with a Vampire, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, uh, Dracula, um, which um, gets a lot of the praise for being an original vampire story. But a lot of it was based off of, you know, the ideas that John Polidori was setting here. There's the weakness in the sun, the idea of drinking blood and straight up killing people, and the idea of being deathless. Because as we see in the story, when Lord Ruthven dies or dies in quotes, like he comes back to life. Uh, the uh, like he's not fully killed, and we don't know what can kill him. We just know that he's drinking blood to, to stay alive for months on end uh, and stay that age forever. Uh, and I, I really think um, we don't really know too much about Lord Ruthven. It's, it's suggested he might be part of British society, but uh, given that um, uh, vampires are part of more Eastern myths, Middle Eastern myths, and uh, especially there's a mention of Greece in this story, I do think that early vampires like Ruthven, like Dracula, um, like the others you see in this story, represented the fear of, of foreigners. Uh, the, the fear that uh, these international people are pretending to be just like us, pretending to be human, and they're coming along and they're sucking our blood, you know, being parasites on society, and they're taking our women. 
so, and I, that falls a line with what was going on in, in the United Kingdom, the British uh, Britain at this time, where uh, it w- the world was becoming much more global, and you had you saw like the uh, England, you, you know, the United Kingdom coming into conflict with France and uh, you know Germany and other foreign countries, and then um, uh, starting to do colonialism in uh, Africa and in parts of Asia, and so you might you might see how they'd hear about those stories and then also fashion them into a way for them to explain their fear of foreigners or something like that. And it's also a bit sexual because again, and the the story ends with uh, Rathbun killing Aubrey's sister on their wedding night. And what typically happens on the wedding night, people often have sex. Uh, consummate the marriage and whatnot uh and here uh it's it's you could see that as sort of like a metaphor for what happens with uh Ruthven drink bl- uh, drinking this woman dry and doing so to many other women because Ruthven is is noted as being somewhat of a player uh somewhat of a man whore <laughs> in this story uh so like you really have this story to thank for like Anne Rice's very sexy interview with a vampire for Twilight for uh so many other stories that have come along and tried to portray vampires as these sexual alluring beings like that wasn't the main focus of the story but you can see the influences there and how someone might adapt that element later on into something more overtly uh, sexual. Another thing we're talking about is Ruthven's allure. Uh, Ruthven being a vampire, but also uh, being sort of a magnetic figure, people wanting to be around him. He's strange and he's mysterious. He's described as being pale and kind of like emotionless and, and not really a lot of things going on with his face. Uh, uh, as um, uh, as the Aubrey says, like, when he's around him, like, he doesn't, he talk, his eyes talk even less than his lips do, so he can't, like, he already doesn't talk too much, but, like, you can't even tell what's going on with his face, like, what he's feeling, he's just so, like, reserved and able to stay cool and calm, and you can't get an idea of what he's, what he's thinking about. Uh, people, but still, people want to be around him because he's he's magnetic. Like there's that vampire charm going on, and there's the fact that when he does talk, like he has interesting things to say. So even though people are are put off by him, and he comes off as creepy and manipulative, uh, because when he's when they're traveling through Europe, Aubrey notices uh, um, Aubrey notices Ruthven doing some unsanitary things. And is put off by by him, but not enough to completely eliminate their relationship. Maybe also making making a commentary about how you know, like the British elites in society won't really push away the other elites, even if they do something heinous. Um, maybe maybe that's what Polidori might be might might be saying a little bit, a little a little parody or something like that. Uh, and we, we, we see more of Aubrey's doubts throughout the stories. Uh, but we also see something interesting in that he's he's trying to justify his worries. He's like, oh, it's only my imagination. I'm only ascribing supernatural things to this man, even though he's not supernatural. But as more things go along, like it seems like he's pushing those things away or denying them rather than accepting the reality that Ruthven isn't a, a, a natural person. And ultimately, it ends up leading to his death. Uh, it all end, ends up leading to his sister's death and that he didn't question this man um, uh, uh, more so than than he wanted to. And I think Polidori might be suggesting that there, there is some truth to the supernatural, that we have the, uh, this folklore and these cultural myths and the, these, these stories that actually mean something and that they protect us from something our ancestors previously knew. Which is an interesting thing, but it also it also lends credence to this fear of foreigners, where it's like, oh, you were mi- right to mistrust that foreigner. They ended up killing someone, and they should should have never been here in the first place. So maybe some racist, xenophobic underlyings, which you also see in Dracula, uh, because you know that's a story that's inherently a fear of foreigners, and. Uh, even the the foreigners are helping Dracula out, helping the mysterious creature out. But that's that's another story entirely. But it is it is still worth talking about. And then of course I have to talk about the gothic nature of this story. Uh, I certainly think that Mary Shelley does a better job of it in Frankenstein, but it is very much prevalent here with that that atmosphere of of death and and darkness and characters being driven mad by uh, a horrifying truth that their mind just can't accept. 
in the case of Aubrey and his story. So, uh, you know, a, a very good example of that early Gothic literature. Uh, but I do still think that some of the writing is, is kind of bland here. Uh, not very exciting. It lost my attention at times. It's just mainly the writing style that's used. Um, I think Mary Shelley does a better job in her books at, at capturing attention without using such, like, boring, boring words, boring structure. Uh, but... Uh, but even then, like, it doesn't completely take away the enjoyment of this story. I, I still very much enjoyed Aubrey's horrifying realization of what Ruffin was and how he was powerless to stop him. Anyway, those are my thoughts on The Vampire by John Polidori, a wonderful uh, addition to the vampire canon of literature. Perhaps the first edition of, uh, of, of vampire literature in the, in the, in the vampire canon. Uh, I definitely think you should all seek it out. I'm going to put a link to it in the description so you can find it and read it. Um, I, I think it's very important to read it because, uh, you know, it's, it's always good to know. It, it's important to know where, where certain stories come from. And this is one of those stories that serves as like a, a strong origin. Um, if you have anything to say about this or if you read it before, you want to comment on something I said here, let me know your thoughts below. Let's have a discussion about this. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this story and uh, this author if they don't already know about them. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and vampiric travels. Farewell.